Hello everyone, my name is Vitalik Ablaev, I'm a sales engineer at Plexim. Welcome to the Plex Model of the Month video series. In this month's video, I will show how the Plex processor in the loop tool was used to validate controller algorithms for solid state transformers located within the Freedom Center's Green Energy Hub testbed. The featured Plex model has been developed by M.A. Awal and his colleagues during their PhD studies at North Carolina State University. To learn more about Solid State Transformers, or SSTs, please see the July 2018 Model of the Month video. Here is Awal and his colleague saying hello. Hello there, I am Awal. I'm CM. We are both PhD students at North Carolina State University, and right now we are at the Freedom Lab. What you see behind us is a network microgrid. As you see, there are three building blocks for this test bed, and for each uh, building block is low voltage solid state transformer, and we use solid, uh, sitting on carbon MOSFETs, and the switch frequency is up to 37.5 kHz. Our next model of the month video could feature your model. If you have a Plex model you're willing to share, Send it to info at plexem.com for a chance to be featured on Plexem's website and social media pages. I will first introduce the concept of processor in the loop, or PIL for short. This slide shows the idea of processor in the loop, where algorithms run on a real microcontroller and the simulation takes turns executing the actual control tasks, virtual physical processes in the Plex model, and the exchange of information between the two via the PIL block. Initially, in a regular offline Plex simulation, you would typically have a model of both, the power stage and the controller, running in one Plex schematic window. This approach is called model in the loop, or MIL, referring to a model of the control logic. Assuming you're using a digital-based control system, further along in your design cycle, you will likely need to either automatically generate or hand code the controller code onto an actual microcontroller in order to test its performance. Before connecting that to a physical power stage, such as an SSD, and risking component damage, however, you have an option to test that compiled C code on the target, along with the virtual environment of a power stage model in Plex, which you likely already have from the previous step. The processor in the loop configuration is more beneficial than MIL, as it allows the detection of platform-specific software defects, such as fixed versus floating math influence, task overruns, casting errors, variable starting delays, as well as multi-threaded execution problems like jitter and resource corruption. That, along with a lower price point, makes Processor in the Loop a very attractive solution to developing and testing controls. If you're interested in a free Plex Pill trial, please send us an email at info at The research and setup for which Plex Pill was used is quite unique and in some ways at the forefront of existing developments. The Green Energy Hub testbed is a smart microgrid which has been around for 10 years and has involved the testing and development of four generations of SSTs. An SST, or a solid state transformer, is essentially the heart, ensuring that the system is plug and play, intelligently manages power, faults, and events such as multi SST islanding and Black Star operation. The Green Energy Hub setup is organized into nodes, each of which includes an SST a house or industrial load, photovoltaic generation, and a stationary battery or a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. This is the part of the SSD, the controller for which was validated in Plex. Here is the microgrid setup along with some technical details. In the photo on the right, the SSDs are in the transparent boxes mounted on the stands. Such an SSD is a reliable, efficient, cost-effective, compact device with bidirectional power flow. In the current, fourth, generation, these use a high-power density modular design achieved using high-voltage silicon carbide MOSFETs and can integrate the generation source on either the DC or the AC sides, as well as dispatch real and reactive power using economic algorithms such as VoltVar at rated conditions. Deployment of such a system increases overall system efficiency and allows for greater conservation of voltage reduction than the current state-of-the-art. If you'd like to know more about the Freedom setup, please see the link below. For the purposes of this project, Plex Pill was used to check that none of the solid-state converter startup transients exceed rated current and voltage values, 
thus avoiding real hardware damage. This was one of the very first tests a Walls group had done, so this model contains the basic control loops such as voltage and current tracking and reactive power injection. These were implemented on a single core Delfino launchpad microcontroller from Texas Instruments. Moving from right to left, I will briefly discuss the SST power stage circuit. It consists of two relays for connecting to the grid, a two-phase interleaved voltage source converter, and a synchronous buck converter for integrating DC loads and battery storage via two relays. Both of the converters are switching at 37.5 kHz with 250 nanoseconds of dead time. The controller itself is not in this Plex model as it will be running on the actual microcontroller. Above the circuit, you see a pill block, which is the one that communicates with the TI-MCU. This is where you connect to the microcontroller target, specify inputs and outputs, and even have the option to overwrite certain variables in your control code without having to reflash it. Connected to the pill block are models of ADC and EPWM peripherals. The former is an experimentally extracted model of the sensors a wall had used, and the latter is drag and drop from our pill peripheral library here. These are the blocks which lead the real MCU into thinking it controls its native hardware ADC and PWM peripherals, when it actually only communicates with these blocks here. Looking into the EPWM block, the registers you will find here closely match those you would find in a TIC2000 family controller, thus making it very easy for someone familiar with that architecture to get started with PIL. When running the model, we see that 1.7 seconds of time are being simulated. Here's a screenshot of the scope with some of the key points explained. A finite state machine oversees the whole control of the SSD and performs the following steps. As the DSP starts up, the controller state machine seeks a stable grid voltage during its first five cycles. When a stable grid is found, the closest relay to the grid is closed to start charging the internal DC bus through a resistor and the anti-parallel diodes of the MOSFETs. Since the grid side converter uses an interleaved half-bridge topology, the DC bus needs to be higher than twice the grid voltage peak value of 340 volts. Once that value is reached, the charging resistor is bypassed by closing the relay in parallel. At this point, the controller starts the grid side converter and through closed loop control charges the internal DC bus with a maximum 1 amp RMS grid current until it reaches the reference value of 760 volts. Two cycles later, the controller starts the synchronous buck converter and increases its voltage reference as a ramp from 0 to 380 volts. Up until now, the load relays have been open, meaning they didn't have any voltage across them. This changes once the voltage across the buck filter capacitor is stabilized and the load then sees the 380 volts. I hope you enjoyed this video on using PIL to validate a controller for a solid state transformer modeled in PLEX. Please submit your PLEX models to info.plexum.com for a chance to have your model displayed. For more videos and other information, please visit our website at www.plexum.com. Thanks for watching.